Hello everyone, it's me, Jace Kameen, and welcome back to Around the Clock at Bikini Bottom Full Game. This is the bonus episode. I know last episode I made it sound very final like it was it, but this whole time I have been skipping the developer commentaries in the extras menus for every single level. I've been saying I'll do them at the end, I'll listen to them at the end, I never did. So this episode is dedicated to these developer commentaries. We're just going to listen, we're going to react, and um, we're going to talk about each one. And it's basically going to be Dave and Padre talking about what inspired them and the creation of the map, the difficulties, the challenges, and what they, you know, all that good stuff. Let's just get into it, okay? Love World was conceptualized uh, quite a while after we began development of Around the Clock. It was about halfway through all of the levels, I'd say, uh -huh. around the ballpark there when we had begun work on it we already had all of the house levels uh worked on wow and a couple of other levels finished as well because glove what? world is our humble beginning to this you know tragic tale yeah of woe and despair going on in bikini bottom we had to take a more like chaotic route mm -hmm. when i had to think of how the story was going to begin i had to keep in mind the knowledge prior of the Jellians in terms of the SpongeBob lore. Yep. Because by that point, they already knew that the Jellians were a thing, and the Jellians were well aware of who exactly ended them during their first reign of terror. Mm. So Overlord, respectively, went to target SpongeBob and basically everyone in a singular They were cluster. pissed. So Glove World. What a prime opportunity, because it's also Squid's concert, along with a firework mm -hmm. display. So that would provide them perfect cover to swoop down and strike. So this level's tr treated more as like an introductory, sort of, yet chaotic That's so awesome. scenario. I never thought about it like that. Thrust into. And based on feedback, a lot of people liked that, so I cannot complain there. <laughs> Glove World was generally an easy level to make, I'd say. Like this, the whole theme park, the old tunnel, Mike. all that was, um, it was pretty easy to make, I'd say. It wasn't so much as smooth sailing with the maze. The maze is actually what we joke around with one of the uh, cursed levels of the game. Oh, yeah. Because of how very fragile and delicate it is. We ran into quite a few problems while uh, in development. Certain areas would end up stuttering, causing quite mm. a large amount of lag, lag. and freezing. It wasn't optimized properly as a result. A lot now, of particles. Of content, it actually does relate with this as well, because originally, if you take a look at the concept art, there was originally a love tapper machine that would emerge yep. from the ground, set itself up in three clicks, and if you were still around it while it was poised, it would slam down on you, crushing you. That's it crazy. It would be another trap to add to the various other traps we have within the maze, but because of the lack of optimization, it would uh... cause even more freezing than what we would have expected so Damn. that had to be terminated we also can't forget the original jellyfish room which used to feature a mother jellyfish instead of the red menaces that would fall down on you the way it would work was that if you stepped on a pressure plate the mother jellyfish would activate and zap the player then we originally had the sea urchin room have actual sea urchins and when you stepped on them they would permanently slow you down. Oh, damn. Because they would stick onto your screen for an extended period of time. Oh, damn. So it was more of a passive trap room, more so than anything. That's so but cool. the amount of sea urchins we have within the room I get that. also caused the game's yep. uh, optimization and frame rate to fail. That so happens. So that had to be scrapped as well in favor of a harmless sea urchin column. As for our main stars of Glove World, left and right Glovey, left Glovey being an original character designed by me, while right Glovey is actually a character that exists yep. in the show already, yep. known as Glovey Glove. They were both designed to be, you know, nice controllable threats as a first-timer experience, but mm -hmm. we wanted to make them unique. We didn't want them to just chase the player around. So I tasked yeah. Dave with creating a almost slender-like AI, minus the danger of looking at them left and right glovey would uh were generally pretty easy uh characters to make when i made their ai all site based and such i ran into a couple of issues with that i had to use box triggers to be able to detect if the player was looking at the ai i remember him talking about this or some sort of you know different mechanic to detect if the glovey was you know in front of the player or not 
pretty much all that wasn't working and I had to settle with box triggers and it seemed to work out pretty well. The only problem I ran into when using box triggers were that it would go through walls. Go through walls, yep. It didn't seem to happen that often because they're pretty short, short radius of the box trigger. So all in all, I'd say that AI it's turned fine. out pretty well. Uh, I will say that I felt as if the map was poorly designed on my part to not show the player where they initially started, which did confuse play testers and YouTubers alike. I will, yeah. uh, I will admit to that. With this said, this level was generally well received, and it was a pretty good introductory. They level fixed that, by the that way. Scared the absolute <laughs> out of everyone who played it. <laughs> And it was quite an enjoyable experience. It's so good. And received feedback. Honest feedback, might I add. I want to thank everyone who's done that during this development phase. Thank you so much. All right. And that was the Glove World commentary. It's so cool to hear them talk about their step-by-step -step and what they had issues with and what they liked and and uh, what needed fixing and what they had to scrap. And it's, it's cool to hear that background for all this shit and i'm excited to get into the other levels that was pretty long so this is probably going to be the longest episode in the series i know they've all been like 15 to 20 minutes long so far this one's probably gonna be a little longer just because it's dev commentaries and it's gonna be me putting my input now as far as the vision mechanics go for glovies uh i was talking to dave about that when we were working on slendy something together because you know dave and i made slendy something together and the slenders in that game have the same mechanic except they have to see you and you have to see them at the same time so we had pretty much the same thing instead of a box trigger like a giant cone that shoots like it, it's invisible obviously you don't see it in the game but it's a giant cone attached to the player that it, it's sized perfectly within like the viewport of the player so if that's overlapping with the ai and the ai can see the player at the same time then it will cause mechanics to happen. That's how I ended up doing that. So it's very similar to what he did here. And the whole they have to see you as well was only to keep it from hitting them through walls because they can't see through walls, you know. So if they see you and they're always coming towards you, then, you know, you know, if they, if they can see you, then obviously there's not a wall between you and them. So that kind of counters that. That's how I ended up working around that. Uh, all right, so Dev Commentary 2, SpongeBob's Pineapple. Now, it's going to be simple for the first few because they're going to be the uh, the um, the demo levels. But let's listen to this one and see because it, you're going to be able to tell a difference between like when they recorded it as well. Like when they finished the level. I had no idea Glove World was halfway through development, by the way. That, that's nuts. The Pineapple was the eighth level to be conceptualized and the third home-oriented level at the time of its development. Just like Patrick and Squidward, I had to not only give the players something valuable to find, but mm -hmm. also introduce an enemy that would be a reference from the show. Yeah. Thus, the doodles were brought to the horror genre. Doodle Bob and Squid Drawing were from episodes Dude. like Frank and Doodle Fucking and brilliant. Doodle Dimension, while Doodle Patrick was from Drawing the Live SpongeBob SquarePants edition. Mm -hmm. Ironically enough, the relationship between the doodles reflects SpongeBob and Patrick's from the mid seasons, whereas Patrick was abusive and SpongeBob would most likely accept the abuse. However, I didn't necessarily agree that their presence within the pineapple, let alone the story, was required. <laughs> yeah. In response, Padre had convinced me to include them when he decided they would serve as a secondary antagonist within the game. That's pretty cool, though. When I designed the pineapple, I, liked it. I was able to keep that feel that you were still in the pineapple and not in some sort of mansion by creating a sort of illusion when looking outside and seeing the same scenery downstairs and upstairs by duplicating the objects outside. Oh, that's cool. To make it seem like you were still seeing it from the same perspective. Once I finally nailed the design of the house, I moved on to the doodles. Damn, Dave. These scum were pretty interesting to design, with them being 2D <laughs> characters instead of 3D like usual. Uh huh. The mechanics for these characters had to work just right. I didn't want to have two roaming enemies in such a small space, you know? So I made Doodle Bob the only mobile threat in the right. house, and Doodle Patrick as an ambush type enemy. We don't talk about squid drawing, though. That sad sap's only good for spawning Doodle Bob in the right places and uh, ending chases quickly. It's good. Dave ran into a few problems while bringing these doodles to life. For instance, Doodle Bob was going to run to the player's location when squid drawing was stepped on, but due to a lack of technical know-how... Yeah, but... Generally stupid. What'd you say about me? Cut that out. <clears throat> we instead favored Cut the idea out. of an instant <laughs> teleport, which would, in turn, reset as patrol. This soft reset would go on to aid players with their escape if they were caught. 
Doodle Patrick is easily one of the more challenging enemies you'll encounter in the base game. Yeah. Due to his unpredictable ceiling teleportation, we had to notify players of old trap points he could rest at. Safe to say that was a good decision between the both oh, of us. Oh yeah. This level is the hardest out of the three that were featured in the private demo, mm -hmm. causing some to rage quit out of spite. I decided to reel back on Doodle Bob's speed a little bit and push his end chase spawn back into the study to make the level a little more fair. For there we go. That's true. We knew our limits when adding a sense of it's, challenge. It's tough. Level. It in was other so words, tough. We had to think like a Sabali in order to tone down the difficulty curve. <laughs> Call him out. Levels. Not throwing shade on Omar. <laughs> we like you. Uh, nah, not really. <laughs> that's fucking awesome, throwing shade on Omar. Omar did like uh, I remember. Th that's actually an Easter egg in the game. That's one of the that's one of the extras. Is Omar rage quitting this level? It was hard, dude. In the private demo, this shit was tough. It took me it took me an hour or two to ace this thing. First off, and then I <laughs> ended up. <laughs> doing a full A speed run of the private demo in like 18 minutes. But uh, yeah, this level is design is great and I love the storyline that they added behind the doodles. The, that It's a side antagonist, a side, side story and stuff, but it, it meshes really well with the jelly and story and it gives you something to kind of remember in the back of your mind that that's there and it gives them something else to add to the game to add it kind of like some depth you know as opposed to it just being like oh yeah here's spongebob and gang and then here's jelly and that's all there is you know it's like oh, okay there's this third party now and what the fuck's going on with that like what's there and then he explains it all anime style and you know it's pretty it's cool i love it i, I love that side story it was very nice all right squidward's monument the monuments are seventh level to come to life a part of the quartet of protagonists home oriented levels while Squidward's precious valuables were pretty obvious choices based on references from the show, mm -hmm. the level's enemy was a treat for some and a disappointment for others. Feeling as if the sea bear appears enough in the show, it was up to me to shine the spotlight on a character who had only appeared once in an in-episode portrait right. and in Operation Krabby Patty as an enemy. It's cool. And a personal favorite of mine, Big Lenny. Yeah, Big Lenny was an interesting pick. Underrated. I didn't think he was going to reference as a full-on enemy. At the time, all of our previous enemies were given sharp edges and polygonal appearances, mm -hmm. which matches my simplistic style seen in my other games. He's gotten a lot Roger better. convinced me to try rounded, more detailed edges and vertices for, you know, a creepier, more menacing characters such as Big Lenny. Mm -hmm. And from here, we began designing the interior of Squidward's monument, even featuring an elevator that only appeared in a few episodes, which in turn helped a lot of players. Originally, Big Lenny was that. a lot like what Doodle Bob would have been, a very fast enemy if you had been spotted, but we scrapped this idea of pure stealth in favor of a slower mid-range foe. However, it was too easy to escape Big Lenny's clutches because every single item felt as light as a feather. A clever solution was to bring you to a crawl yeah. by disabling sprinting on certain items, and we had gone as far as to disable the elevator on the last item. Mm -hmm. In the private demo, so Big Lenny well became a very unpredictable threat to some, an idiotic jellyfish to others because of these tests that we couldn't really mess with his difficulty all that much making the level pretty average between the time it takes to yeah. beat the level how often a player would die and how scary it could potentially be mm -hmm. yeah these were a few factors that contributed to the labeling of difficulty settings for the average baseline playthrough of such yeah. a level now when they saw when they say average baseline they mean not acing you cannot take into con like you you can't take the the level difficulty judgment whatever the fuck they called it into account when you're acing it, it, ace drastically increases the difficulty because you got to do it perfect that's why it's called ace you got to beat the level perfectly in order to ace it that's why all the long ass levels are deathless and the shorter levels are time because you gotta do it, it do it well and you gotta find everything you gotta be got to ace it that's why it's called ace <laughs> so um, um another thing that they did that balanced the level out really well was they added the checkpoint after the first two items um they added the uh, it gets dark and you have to use the flashlight which doesn't seem like a lot but it fucking is <laughs> it's a big deal and they removed the fact that you could like you could camp at the top of the staircase and then just jump off when big lenny was coming up the stairs and kind of juke him they did that with both staircases actually 
because you were able to juke Big Lenny so easy. And for the record, I think Big Lenny was an awesome choice for this. I think they could have maybe used the Sea Bear for like tutorial of this game uh, instead of having Big Lenny show up twice. But at the same time, it's cool. It adds depth, it adds story, and you see Big Lenny again, and you're like, what the fuck? How'd he get in there? Because he's not even a Jellion, right? He's not even a clone. He's just Big Lenny, and he only appeared in a couple episodes, and he didn't actually appear, and he's so fucking creepy. Like, if you see his artwork in the actual episodes, he's so fucking creepy. All right, Patrick Schrock. I wanted to try my hand at conceptualizing a level at this point in development, so I took the reins for Patrick's Rock, the there you sixth go. level developed for the game. Originally, I was going to reference Patrick's mirror image monster from Rule of Dumb, respectively, at a time where Patrick's character hit his low point in the show. Mm. But I decided to take a different route and make Evil Patrick, or Prowler Patrick, which became his finalized name. So Very pretty cool. much the concept I had for the level was to make a trippy, dreamlike scenario where the Worked. landscape resembles his rock home, and it slowly degrades into some sort of twisted nightmare. Oh, where so travel cool. through like a bizarre version of the streets of Bikini Bottom, through the kelp dunes, and finally, the rocky highway. When Dave presented the level to me, much to my surprise at the time, it wasn't a bad level. However, I found there were points where the level felt like a drag, perhaps a too unfair. With my assistance, he was able to nerf the immense that. difficulty curve a little bit. It was pretty tough. From the Prowler Pat, a hallucination as a result of the psychological battle between Patrick and the Prowler who ambushed him in his home. Prowler Patrick's speed was too fast there you to go. begin with, often cornering the player at dead ends, which were another <laughs> problem at the time. There's so many. The speed was decreased, there and were most so many. dead ends were opened as alternative paths. There you go. The scrapped Sand Doors expansion level was completely redesigned to serve as the Kelp Dunes, with the Shadow Spawn coming much earlier than Prowler Patrick's appearance in this section in the summer. Finally, the sprint to the escape door was originally not timed, but felt too common despite the intensity of the situation. Not only this, but the level was expanded to feature pirate ships from Robot Pirate Island, a reference to the Imagination Box, respectively. Coincidentally, the Prowler Jellion was conceptualized a bit after development of this entire I was wondering level about began, that. who would then go on to serve as one of the more annoying reoccurring enemies in the game. Arguably the main enemy in the game, especially as you saw by, <laughs> by Chef's Calamity. <laughs> the main enemy. That's super cool, by the way. I didn't even realize. Play! Oh, yeah. My action figures are close now. I can feel it. You can play the scrapped level. Oh, God. So this is what he was talking about, huh? <laughs> this is great. Oh my god, this is such a cool addition. Oh, now I know what he's talking about when he says dead ends. For sure. Oh my god, I love this. I love that they kept this. This is so cool. And it's so, like, dreamlike. Oh my god. This is ridiculous. So instead of the kelp maze, it was going to be this originally. There it is. And that's it. That's so fucking cool. Oh my god, that's so cool. I can't, I did not even know that was a thing. That's insane. All right, uh, anchor away. Mr. Krabs, poor Mr. Krabs, quite the tragic hero. Mr. Krabs would serve as one of the key oh. story components within the Round the Clock, yeah. marking his beginning within the anchor. The concept was to have Mr. Krabs completely oblivious, as oh. his mid-season character is, to the immediate dangers around him, despite obvious warnings. While completely aware of the pinky, he doesn't know that his daughter's been kidnapped and cloned as a result. That's why Mr. Krabs is heartbroken to have to gun down an imitation of his daughter as she howls in pain. Deciding if the money is really worth it, we instead give his more caring side the spotlight as he values mm -hmm. the safety of his family and friends over some cash. Hell yeah, dude. I felt as if this was an appropriate step to have character development within the game from mm -hmm. a writing standpoint. Oh yeah. In development of the house, which slightly differs from Padre's original house layout, 
but it was excused due to the leap of logic the show has when it comes to interior design in mm -hmm. comparison to the exterior. From here, I created Pearl, and we set off to create the first sleeping enemy-oriented level. Due to the original difficulty of the level being a pretty average experience based on player feedback, mm -hmm. we decided to tone it down. Some floorboards were shuffled around so there weren't so many money blockades. Right, and the speed yeah. of mobile enemies that was kind of tough. Reduced. At this point, the anchor was much easier to manage and appropriately labeled an easy level. Yeah, uh, again, don't count it as easy if you're acing it. Um, I love it. I love collecting money. I got that from uh, uh, the Shopping Nightmare 2. I fucking love collecting money in Dave's games. It's my favorite thing to do in Dave's games is collect money. Um, by the way, I'm pretty sure that's Jay right there from... Um, What's it called? Uh, Strange Terror. I don't know. Maybe maybe not. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, Anchor Way and Mr. Krabs and Pearl. God, the story's so good. Like, I, I fucking love the turn it took. I love how they took the universe into their own hands. I love how they took everything and they made their own, they put their own spin on it. They made it sad and they made you fall in love with Mr. Krabs. Mr. Krabs was like the hero. He was the badass. He loved his family. He loved his friends. You got to use a fucking cannon with him in one of the last levels. And then he dies. And Pearl dies too. It's crazy. It's so fucking sad. It's so fucking sad. Okay. Tentacle Lakers. Hey everybody, it's <laughs> your boy Sugar Nips. No. I totally didn't forget to record <gasps> my microphone when we were doing these, which by the way, totally not last minute. We're not doing these last minute in the slightest bit. Let me just say that. I'm forgetful, no, 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 no. sure. But uh, we're not doing these last <laughs> minutes like within the last month or so of development of uh, it. I remember this. No, 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 no. <laughs> Silly. It's yeah, Dave's new yeah, mic now too. Anyway, Tentacle Lakers, how about that level, right? Um... Yeah, what a, what a fun level. Uh, we're not, we're not, we don't have a script, by the way. Well, you can tell. A script. This, is, uh, this is all part of the script. You can here. tell. Oh, oh, okay, okay, I see. Yeah, 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 like the whole, like, confusion right there, that's part of it. And the, yeah. and the fourth yeah, wall so. break right there and here, part of it. Okay. And, so, so fun. Anyways, anyways, Tentacle Acres. So, uh, we needed to introduce um, some new mechanics for Squidward because Squidward was going to be our uh, miscellaneous character where we throw him to, into just random scenarios type mm -hmm. of deal. Um, and this particular instance, uh, I decided that we would go for more of a puzzle-solving approach to spice up the gameplay, so it's not purely just... Squidward horror, is like the puzzle-solving um, level, dude. So we introduced pebble tossing, uh, to hit switches, to break vases, that sort of thing, uh, within the first section. That comes back to... Then after that, we finished and worked on the, uh, uh, surveillance, uh, sort of, uh, scenario where you would go into a camera room and try to guide Patrick throughout the neighborhood of Tentacle Acres. And this was uh, kind of new to me. I never really worked with a camera system before, so uh, programming this was kind so of a technological cool. challenge, but eventually it actually turned out pretty well, and I was uh, yeah. proud of how it you know, came out. Uh, of course, then we have the, the, the signature of this level. The, the call yes. back to probably the shittest boss Iron in any Dogfish. SpongeBob game, especially as a final boss. So and cool. A lot of SpongeBob games could have bosses in them. <laughs> Behold, Iron Dogfish. Iron Dogfish is badass. A character completely unrelated to the plot. Who cares? Of uh, Super Sponge. Uh, we try to emulate as much of so cool his though appearance in and that the name as much as possible. Um, in the that theme. goes for the music, which by the way, Mason did a great job uh, making a recomposition. Of the Iron yeah, Dogfish it was a theme. bop. I loved it. <laughs> Very much a bop. So good. Um, so good. The uh, mechanics as well were reintroduced. I mean, dogs basically a <laughs> earth bender, you know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's basically. Pretty much it. Uh, now we're gonna move yeah. on to other recordings, and uh, <laughs> with this amazing script that we have, um, uh, where oh, we're no. recording this time properly. And, um, yeah, you know, it's great. It's fun. And please, please make sure your, your audio is recording right now, by the way. Uh, don't worry, bud. It is. It, I, <laughs> oh, I, good. I, I double checked. I know. Oh, my God. I know that feeling all too well. But, yeah, I, I, I noticed that, uh, that Squidward's often thrown into the more puzzly levels, the more miscellaneous levels. And it's so cool how they structure each 
uh, character to play in their own types of levels, like um, the brute force levels usually given to uh, uh, given to Mr. Krabs, where he gets to use the gun or he gets to like take things out. You know, usually just gun levels, right? And then you got SpongeBob and like levels with fast enemies that you need to run from. And then you got Squidward with the puzzles and you got Patrick with the boss fights. And it's just, it's such a cool structure that they have a different character for each situation. And Tentacle Acres was not one of my favorite levels. <laughs> to be honest, it was so long. It was so hard to ace. And it, dude, it took forever to find the Easter eggs in it. Not as long as Boating School, that fucking hat. Jesus. Okay, let's listen to Bargain Mart. So let me tell you guys, uh, some nerd, some, some degenerate made a mistake and didn't record his microphone. Can you believe the nerve of that? Yeah. Let me tell you guys. <laughs> God. What a Again? complete and utter stooge. You know uh, who else was a stooge? Dave, when he was making Bargain Mart. Hit it, Dave. What <laughs> mess that level was the frame rate was all over the place oh Originally my god the alpha builds when we were working on it um the game was forced to like low graphic settings because the frame rate was abysmal eventually i optimized it after AI. multiple renditions of the level and figured out it was just a lot of <laughs> just unnecessary physics too many ai on the map oh and, yeah the cans uh the lighting eventually, i remember the cans i got the level working fine Right now, I'm perfectly happy with it. It's probably one of my favorite levels in the game. The music is great. Uh, Music's Padre's so good. Just, yeah. Hit it, Padre. Uh, the, the good old, good old ba da ba da ba 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 you know? It's uh, so good, though. Uh, like, conceptually, we wanted to go for a more uh, slower-paced sort of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. For me, there's still a little bit of element in that uh, element of horror in that level in the sense that it's more of a focus, I guess, on crowd anxiety. Yeah. Than anything. Yeah, um, definitely. That, like, you're always feeling like you're being watched. So especially with SpongeBob and Mr. Krabs disguised mm -hmm. as uh, clones in a clone store. Yeah, dude. Uh, I think that kind of encapsulates that feeling particularly well. Mm -hmm. And just the inclusion of um, allowing the player to uh, complete the level by two, two different ways. Yeah, I thought that was an interesting. So cool, dude. Uh, that could be contributed for. Um, the time trial that's also featured within and that this level. This is the you only have level to. with unique game mechanic. Uh, the rest are very boring <laughs> levels. Uh, Dave. Very, very shameful indeed. Dave. You know? yeah, yeah. Right, like this does have a unique game mechanic. Yeah, what a dumb What a stooge. What a moron. I'm not that guy. Don't listen to the time oh. characters. One that that one doesn't exist in my eyes anymore. The one we I'm just listened to. I'm doing that audio, uh, as we speak. Yes. So goodbye. Uh, and this is gonna cut off now uh, as I speak uh, for the next like minute. So uh, yeah, have fun. You know, uh, enjoy life. Um, hope you Guys. enjoy the rest of the game. Come on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking great. But yeah, Bargain Mart was, um, I, it started off being my least favorite level. I'm not gonna lie. It's like boring to me. But as I got more into it and as I tried to ace it, it became so much more fast paced. And it was, it's, it's, it's hard. You gotta like really strategize of how you want to do things in this level. So Bar Bargain Mart was fun. I, I have no complaints. I don't know how the hell Dave got so many AI in one level without it lagging. Like, it, the whole physics thing lagging the level was straight up like the stacks of cans. They had physics apparently. Like you, they just go flying around the map and shit. <laughs> so stupid. All right, Mrs. Puff's boating school. Yeah, so Mrs. Puff's boating school. This level was also pretty, you know, outdated originally. Like it was um, visually not very good. Uh, the inside, <laughs> like the main school like you know got a lot of uh changes got completely revamped mostly the outside was kept the same uh, uh, it did have uh, originally the outside did have a nestler and a prowler that was you know that nestler about along with the lighthouse and the angler i remember so the nestler it was it was tough pretty difficult <laughs> but Dude. the inside oh, uh, the prowler yeah, too were, were the prowler's gone yeah, yeah exactly uh internally internally um, we had Mrs. Puff that was literally just a reskin of an angler. Um, and then there were yeah, originally, I that. um, Jellion guards 
or officers don't remember that, that. Would patrol as well that which were also just reskins i believe of <laughs> anglers I'm trying to remember do the anglers exist before them or no i think they were originally the guards and then we turned them into the anglers yeah i believe right yeah but then you know we removed the anglers out completely uh, out of the inside of the school yep yeah, just so that way we could give Puff, like, the bit of spotlight. She went through Fun a lot fact of too. changes in her mechanics. Um, oh, yeah. So being a very basic spotlight enemy, uh, we gave her a bit of uh, dynamic um, sort of behavior. Especially encouraging the fact yeah. that this is a SpongeBob level and that you have to be very stealthy. Mm -hmm. um, she works in the way now that if you are spotted, she will give chase and get progressively and progressively faster. Yep. Um, if you do lose her, she will actually go around and investigate the area mm -hmm. and honestly like an owl it's one of the more scarier levels it that's it's one of the more tough. scarier yeah. segments especially when you're found it's close quarters Mixon, oh my goodness Mixon gave that me audio puppet oh wait that was a mix vibes, up like, it was a mix and i actually made that oh, that, uh, made chase that. theme yeah i made that in rhythmic <laughs> oh that's oh, so that, what wow, okay. are you, you serious me Mixon, giving me puppet combo vibes uh this is our first time Damn, recording Dave. This, by the way i'm energetic who we i also just a quick edit i uh just also found out recently that um mixon was actually pronounced moon yes it's spelled like mxxn that's why we always pronounce it as mixon rather than moon but yeah that was just uh just wanted to throw that in there post editing <laughs> I've been calling him Mixon too. It's okay. So yeah, um, there, it, I remember playing an early test build, build of Mrs. Puff's boating school, and it was hard. It was so fucking hard. Uh, Mrs. Puff's Puff inside was tough because she'd see you. She was like a roaming. Yeah, she she just roamed around and she'd see you and she'd kill you, and uh, you had to do the same mechanics, everything. Uh, but outside there was a Nestler and a Prowler. That's why when I first played this, I don't remember if I cut it or not. Uh, but I was like, where's the Nestler? You know, like the, the diggy thingy, I think I called it. And then there wasn't a Prowler or anything. Shit was, shit was hard. So I was prepared for it, so it was much easier playing in the full version. But yeah, man, they, they've, they've definitely buckled down on their game design and it, it, it shows. So uh, Goofy Goober is probably my favorite level. At the time, we had Micro Horror Arcade, uh, also known as JC Beam, playtesting some of our levels. Uh, most notably, he played the private demo and was the first to ace every level publicly, Aww. as well as perform a couple of speed runs. That's me. Uh, Jay stated that you could easily last for hours within Glove World's abandoned funhouse due to the amount of control you could force into the Glovey duo. Padre took this as a challenge to heighten the difficulty of the next creepy enemy. <laughs> when the time came to create Goofy Goobers, Padre wanted a unique set of mechanics for it the It was level. hard. The clamp cam was developed to counter the suit, who at the time would only sneak up on the player and constantly stalk them. Very cool. Instead, he'd barrel towards the player and require a quick reaction time to prevent it yes. from reaching Patrick. Map-wise, everything is shaped out great, but the suit could be easily countered with no difficulty curve. Mm -hmm. We agreed that disturbing the nest which should result in random jellions spawning into the map to make the experience harder. The amount that would spawn per hive was four, but it had to be cut down to one per hive to keep the level at like an average difficulty. Not only this, but for every flash against Goofy, it would, it would become progressively faster to keep the player from sticking I remember around that. longer than they should. Yep. Then we became aware that the randomly spawning jellions were too inconsistent for the level's time trial. Oh my god. Thus, we made the order of the jellions and the patrols that was consistent tough. to keep a level playing field. That was tough. At this rate, the slow pace would allow you to get comfortable with vultures and alphas while also allowing you to practice with the clam cam in peace. Mm -hmm. Not only this, but you could plan a route to take ahead of time, increasing yep. the likelihood of people beating the level in a shorter amount of time as well as developing alternative strategies. Very nice. In other words, we grace you with less RNG. You're, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> I love less RNG. Back before when I started game development, I didn't. I was like, I was like, RNG is fucking great. I fucking random everything. But now I'm like, consistency, please. <laughs> like, I've changed so much. But yeah, that's really cool they mentioned me. Um, Goofy Goobers. Probably my favorite level. Uh, challenge accepted from Padre, but <laughs> it's it's fun. The f I, fun fact, when I tested Goofy Goobers, like early, early, early development, I couldn't beat it. Like I, 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 when I finally beat it and aced it, it, there, it was a bug. Like, you know how you have, 
in, yeah, you have to hold down E. I think you had to hold down E. I don't remember if you still do to, to fill the mayo in these hives. But I was holding down E and I got killed while I was holding it down. But in the game over menu, I could still hold down E and it would still fill up the gauge. So I kept it held down and it filled up the gauge while I was in the game over screen. And then it started the end cutscene and I got the ace. So that, that was the first time I aced it. So I was very surprised to have been able to ace Goofy Goopers. Basically my first try uh, in my casual playthrough. Plus I, I learned that the Prowler, the suit, actually um, it's always roaming around. It's roaming around and it's patrol, but it's invisible until it sees you. I didn't know that. I thought it just spawned on top of you. That's why I thought it kept pee pawing me. No, it just kept happening to like see me. So, all right, Mermelair. So, Mermelair, you know, well, that was that was a level. Yeah, that was a level. Probably uh, like <laughs> the most indeed poorly balanced uh, level of the bunch. Probably second worst technically made <laughs> level. I mean, to be fair, the Damn. level needs to be really bad before because there were no checkpoints and it was non-linear. But after we added checkpoints, oh my you know, god, linear, it wasn't as bad to deal with. At least, I hope so. I don't know what people are going to think about this level when the game drops. It's fine. Oh, well, see, that's Plenty the of first points. half of this level, me bucko. The second half of oh, the level... Oh, the boss fight. Oh, um, my. That was actually conceived... God. Yeah, that, was, uh, that was conceived when, um, again, one of those late-night thoughts of, you know what, let's just bring Starfish Man back, because I love Creature from the Krusty Krab so much. People yeah. are like, always like a mixed bag when it comes to that game, in terms of how they feel. I Fucking love Starfish game. Man. I understand that is meant to be like a quirky sort of game. Um, not the best designed game, admittedly. Well aware of that. But honestly, one of my more favorite bits They did so game, well with this. Uh, is like just the Starfish Man segments. I always dreamt of just like a game focused more on Patrick being oh, a superhero more than And it is. Else. They did um, it. But anyways, I digress. Oh, uh, so cool. So the combat mechanics, they were great. They were intuitive. However, we barely had any time for that. Very good. Uh, before we added a lot more sections for the combat. So nobody who playtested understood properly what to do without us explaining that. And that was a Yeah, problem. it was tough. They actually, uh, Jace, Jace could be, by the way. Is it's a, me. It's a saint. <laughs> Very patient saint, but even that broke him, and that 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 I think for me was the turning point. Um, where Boss rush was hard. Time I told Dave, we gotta we gotta fix this. It was hard. We gotta do something about hmm. this because this is gonna be the point where people either leave the game or like push through. And That's what I was thinking. That's exactly what I was saying. The experience. So we included uh, more segments in the game with combat. We yes. Patrick combat oh, and it made the game so much better. A tutorial, like, in the uh, second Patrick level uh, that you can play anytime after you complete that level. So and not good. to mention, we also made it a lot more clear when to attack and when, you know, characters are doing certain things. Because before, it was only indicated when, like, there were red stars floating around them that they're yep. vulnerable. But now, there's an icon above their so head much that better. their attack status. So and if they were much vulnerable better. with that, you know, white mark over their head. Mm -hmm. uh, at the time of recording this, we haven't actually put this into play testing. I mean, it has been play tested, but you know, we haven't tested the newest version of Mermelade. <laughs> uh, but we Jay hasn't tested it yet. Crossing our fingers that it works out good. You know, it works out great. Mm -hmm. I think Mermelade is in a better condition than it was before. Um, I, I loved the concept of it. The execution was definitely not great. Uh, it's I feel so like good now, it's though. Probably like my second least favorite level of mm. the bunch. The characters, however, the characters in that level, very, very good. I loved including all those villains, and I think anyone that's a fan of SpongeBob mm -hmm. would appreciate. God, it's so cool! Superhero fights and just callbacks to other things, especially lights, camera, pants as well, with just sneaky hermit. Yeah. Anyone who's a SpongeBob video game fanatic. Will, sneaky will nippers. That they like, that's for sure. Yeah, dude. Ah, oh, it's so cool, man. I, I'm. Thanks for mentioning me again, guys. You guys are so nice. I, I don't know how many of you have made it this far in the video, but I'm like 40 minutes into the recording, and there's probably not going to be any cuts in this one, uh, as there have been in the recent ones. This is, like I said, it's going to be the longest video because I'm actually taking the time going through and listening to the developer commentary, reacting to it, and all that stuff. Anyway, that to the side. I remember testing this level, and it was so 
counterintuitive. Like I, I could not figure out these bosses. I mean, eventually I did, but I remember specifically hopping in a call with Padre and sharing my, like my gameplay screen with him. And like, I was like, what the fuck do I do? Like I did, I had no idea what to do. And some of, some of the bosses mechanics were too hard. Some of them were like super unintuitive. Like there's no way anybody could figure it out. But when they added those icons above their heads and they added the tutorials in the game and even in this test, like this playthrough, the first time I played Mermelair, it was broken still. Like the checkpoints didn't work and um, the bosses were a bitch. And Dave even told me, nah, scrap the video. Let me fix this and I'll give it, I'll give you a new update and all that stuff. And um, it'll be good. And he did and it was good. But before it was like, I, I, even in this test version, like the version prior to this when I tried to record this, uh, it was still hard to figure out the mechanics like and I had done it before so the new tutorials and stuff and they added the hint clams and all that and that and that's gonna help a lot and in 1.0 the game that you guys are gonna play um, are playing because this video is gonna go out way after it's been released is gonna be way more polished it's gonna have way more opportunities to learn it's gonna be way more well tested I found so many bugs just doing this playthrough and this is the youtuber version this is the version that a bunch of youtubers were given to play early so yeah mermelair was a big turning point this was a big point for me in them where they were like okay jay's a pretty good tester because i i'm like a bug magnet it's fucking crazy so anyway industrial park hello everybody we're gonna die because i'm rocking like barely any sleep padre only got like three hours of sleep uh Oh, we let record. Me tell you about my wee little tummy oh, yeah. ache and my binging of Sam and Max. Save the world remastered. By the way, love that game. Grew up in the, my tweens with that game for series. Tweens. Games, uh, waiting for Dude. the other two remastered seasons, as we speak. <laughs> Come on, uh, man. But yeah, went to bed around three that uh, prior night. Uh, didn't actually sleep until four, and then three and a half hours later, I woke up with the worst stomach ache because I had like four large pieces of pork schnitzel and a whole bunch of fries. Why would you? Why would you do that? Because I was hungry. Guys. And I gorged the sh out of pork. Industrial Park. <laughs> okay. Anyways, well, industrial, uh, pork, industrial Park. Uh, park. <laughs> um. <laughs> Let me tell you about industrial pork, alright? So let, let me tell you about that. Um, we actually had okay. quite a number of segments cut out of this level. This was going to be a, a lot longer of a level than what it currently is. Um, mm -hmm. We were obviously going to have the segment um, that's first, uh, with Mr. Krabs going through the alleyways. Uh, and then after that, uh, it was going... I think after that, you were supposed to go through a building. It was like a building section. Oh, that's right, yeah. Because you end up at the top of the building. Or something mm -hmm. at one point. <sighs> Like you, cause, cause we cut, cause we cut that whole bit out where Mr. Krabs just teleports to the rooftop, you know, with that yep. little shortcut scene. I, I noticed you're that. You're actually gonna be able to explore the main that building you entered. There's gonna be a whole segment in there. Then it was gonna be the rooftops. After the rooftops was gonna be the boss fight with the airplane instead of being on the rooftops, oh, yeah, gunning so, down plankton. So what? Just to give people context, this was like our first prime 3 a.m. late night Padre and Dave session, uh, where we were both horribly sleep depraved no Most, shit this was back in 2019 pretty sure yeah yeah it was like early 2019 <laughs> um, so you know, we're, hard. We're, sitting, we're sitting there was hard. brainstorming and we're like okay here we are right what if what if mr krabs just rips open his shirt and he just Fuck pulls yeah. out a damn minigun that has he does. mayonnaise in it. And he just starts blasting at Plankton without a care in the world. Um, before that, before we scrapped out the plane Fuck sections, yeah, dude. it was going to be like Spongebob and Patrick in a plane, like on an on-rail section, much like in Creature from the Krusty Krab, because that is also another one of my favorite sections from that game. Trying to emulate that sort of thing of just like moving your plane mm, around. I like the original approach they took better. Um on-screen prompts, which would be Plankton trying to attack you and stuff like that. Nah. Very cinematic looking, all that sort of fun stuff. And then nah. the other main section, um, instead of the boss that you have here in this game, it was going to be Mr. Krabs running around on the wings 
of the propeller plane um, <laughs> dodging Plankton's attacks and like slowing him down what? while also whittling his health down. And it was stupidly epic and hilariously <laughs> dumb. Uh, we scrapped it for obvious technical reasons. Oh uh, yeah, and it also made it would also would have made the level really long. Oh and I think also, yeah. Um, I don't think we actually gonna have Mr. Krabs's health. Like we're gonna no. just use that uh, airplane health bar that you made, the icon, dude. And you know, eventually we didn't even uh, do that. We there... just set up the whole rooftop battle with Mr. Krabs and all that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it did turn out well. Um, Plankton was actually one of he was not only the first boss of the game. But he also yep. had the esteemed pr privilege of getting the animation revamp treatment, which uh, yeah. turned out very well because a lot of characters when I got say that. That looks a lot better than what he originally looked like, being stop motion and looking like a st <laughs> stiff piece of bean. <laughs> Oh my god, that's fucking amazing! But yeah, I remember playing Industrial Park in the uh, the early alpha, and I aced it, but it was hard as. Shit, jumping was wonky. Uh, the boss fight, you only had one hit and you're dead. So you had to literally go through the whole boss fight without being touched. Because this was before the three hit, the, like the hearts thing was a thing. And like anglers were tough to manage. The berry thing was hard to figure out for the first time. That's why I'm lucky I knew how to do it already for this playthrough. I could just run straight through Industrial Park because I actually aced it my first try here. I did use the exploit that doesn't exist anymore in the current game, but... I can go back and ace it again. I mean, like I said, I plan on steep speed running this shit. So, okay. Uh, Krusty Krab. How many more do I have? Two, three, four, five more. Okay. So here we go. Krusty Krab. So the Krusty Krab. Uh, this level um, was more of the simpler ones for me to make, mostly because the game mechanics were pretty uh, simple. And the uh, whole level was just a copy-paste of 3M and the Krusty Krab's Krusty Krab map, basically. Yeah. Which, by the way, is also used in the lobby screen as well. Um, originally, the level was just a single segment of, you know, surviving one hour, and that's it. But then we decided to add in uh, difficulties uh, from Very the cool. easiest to the hardest, as well as a training videotape to teach the player the so game mechanics good. if you didn't quite understand it. Additionally, um, the Hashlinging Slasher was one of the characters that got the uh, reanimation. Uh, so vamping. good. I handled it his looks animation. Nice. Uh, despite him being the most simplistic in terms of rig, he was actually the most complex to animate because really? I had to account for him appearing oh, in different places. Yeah, that's right. At different times. You had like your baseline animations like walking and running and all that, but I had to make yeah, the window specific animations that I the didn't back have a door. reference of. So I had to visualize it within my brain, my You did big really big well. Brain. That's you did smooth really. brain of yours. <gasps> ah, we don't smooth brain for smooth brain. animations, man. <laughs> Nobody shall know from the tentacle acres or bargain mart. Dev commentary is what happens. The past is in These past. dev commentaries, though, uh, you gotta yeah, admit. Anyways, um, despite being complex and being simple, it was actually the most fun to animate. Because um, I think my favorite animation in that whole thing uh, was just like him leaping through the window, like running up to the window, and then just like going into a box and then popping his limbs out. I thought that was just like a nice a sort of touch. I, I never actually saw those animations either. Oh my god, no, I feel so bad now. But his animations were really, really, really well done. The level itself, I think, is the most unique. It may be my favorite. It is definitely the most difficult. 1,000%. This is the hardest level to ace, the Krusty Krab. If you want to be a champion at this, ace the Krusty Krab. It's, it's fucking tough. So, yeah, animations look really good. That's really all I have to say. I, I played the um, the alpha. I did ace the alpha. Um, it was just as hard. <laughs> I think, uh, actually, I think the pinky, it would body block you back then or something like that. Like, you couldn't walk through it, but there, there were ways around it. So, basically, the same strategy wins either way you look at it. Uh, it, it took a lot of sleep. Like, I, I had a lot of sleep deprivation trying to ace it this go-around. If you guys remember that episode, I was, like, fucking dead. My soul was drained. When I won, I didn't think I was going to win. It was fucking crazy. So, okay, Larry's Gym. So, Larry's Gym's pretty straightforward in terms of... Um, so cool. 
It pretty much stayed consistently the same. God. The only thing that we really changed was the visuals of yeah. the level. Yeah. Um, there are, uh, because it was originally set to nighttime, uh, and then we gave well it that done. sort of purplish uh, sky mm -hmm. to give it the sort of like dawn sort of appearance. Um, internally, uh, there was going to be a lot more complexity to the ventilation system. There were actually going to be enemies crawling around within the vent, uh, but we decided to scrap that due to technical reasons. Also, playtesters couldn't navigate through the vents because they got lost very, very easily. Wow, uh, really? So we decided to... Not me. Um, or at least Dave decided to put giant arrows in case people got lost. So and signs, it, it... And, and signs too. Uh, the bunny <laughs> dumbbells are here, but also those other dumbbells are over there, so go that way. Yeah, you used to have to memorize the word they were. Um, another um, mechanic that I guess we didn't mention um, in our previous recording. I mean, uh, not previous recording. This is our first recording. Yeah, actually. yeah, of course, of course. Oh, we, yeah. We, we didn't screw up, no, you know. No, <laughs> I, I didn't screw up at all. I, I, am, I am too good. Oh, that's at fucking recording. great. Um, another thing that we included was um, the anglers. The anglers. Uh, oh, fuck those anglers, dude. Arms. That was a pretty nifty mechanic. Uh, it was a little hard at points, uh, so we toned it back a little bit in terms of um, their uh, aggression and response Did you? to them. Uh, the main the main thing, um, the highlight of that level was the inclusion of the boxing, boxing menace, menaces. Because the boxing menace um, so is good. actually based off of a uh, Patreon submission from, I believe, Max. So it was. An idea for, like, um, I still don't remember the name of the jellion, or, uh, or the jellyfish, rather. It's like the fisted thumper or jumper or something like that. Okay. Um, so I went off of that design and gave it a little bit more of like a silly sort of uh, quirky design to it. And That's I, so I cool, basically though. just took the red menace and just converted it more into like a different type of enemy, into like a boxing menace, which would be more aggressive I like than it. them, provided that you didn't provoke them. So they're in a mm -hmm. way, they're sort of like, uh, I guess, like mines in a way. It, it, they're different enough to be I get that. unique. Yeah, still definitely. Share similarities to the common enemy. Uh, that is the Red Menace. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, Larry's Gym is probably the most consistent level. Uh, I remember people complaining about the vents being confusing. Uh, that was one thing that I was like, ah, maybe signs would be good. You know, like, I, I, at first you are gonna get lost. You're gonna go the wrong way. You're gonna fuck up. But and that's where the trial and error comes in. Then you can't ace it that run until you memorize it. But I think the vents themselves are such a good idea. Like I said in my playthrough, I was actually going. I don't know if I scrapped it or not. I probably scrapped it because there were so many tries <laughs> trying to ace this thing. Uh, a game I was gonna make called Fancy Man and Skull Daddy was gonna use this kind of vent system, but I ended up scrapping it because uh, I I just love this so much. This is probably one of my favorite mechanics that dave has done in a game and it's so fucking cool because you're actually in the vents above the level it's the coolest thing in the world to me like i i think it's fucking awesome that's pretty much all i have to say about that the, I, like i said the gameplay stayed the same when i tested that game it was pretty much exactly like it is now uh minimal differences I, they added the signs that made it way easier uh, but I mean if you memorize it you memorize it anyway I remember which way to go without looking at the signs now anyway so all right jellyfish fields jellyfish fields despite the level being one of the last few in the game it was actually the first level to be conceptualized originally Padre Ooh. thought Prince Jillian would hover around in the sky like swooping down to zap the player if they were out of cover for too long okay to keep the suspension of running cover to cover high Due I get that that's pretty cool experience at the time I was able I was unable to do this <laughs> Instead, we created a marathon for Patrick where the player has to outrun Prince and its various goons. This marked the start of our creation process for the Jellians, beginning with the Pinky and Red Menace, also known as the Horned Jellian. So cool. Today we re uh, redesigned the map to fit this marathon style, and the level itself would be uh, improved upon in between development of other levels. As time passed, more Jellian variants were added, thus they were featured within Jellyfish Fields. Eventually, we add an alternative path so the player could encounter other Jellians. Yes. In the original design for the map, there was like a bridge that would serve as a means to reach the waterfall, but that was eventually scrapped when the map was redesigned. That Feedback bridge. The level was varied. Right Some found it pretty easy. Others couldn't bypass certain areas due to the amount of enemies that populated the map. 
In due time, checkpoints were included, and the enemy clusters were reduced in aggression. Overall, I'd say this level turned out pretty well. Kept going back to it every month, improving upon it until it turned it's into fun. what you see today. A masterpiece! <laughs> <laughs> is that it? That and the boss fight, they didn't even mention Bessie. The boss fight at the end is just so fucking... I, I love Bessie. That's probably my favorite boss fight. And the music is so fucking good in the Bessie boss fight. I love it. I love Jellyfish Fields. There, I said it. I love that there's different routes you can take. I, I just, I, it's all good. Okay, Goo Lagoon. Goo Lagoon. Ugh. Ah, Goo Lagoon. <laughs> ah, Goo Lagoon. What, what a, it, was, it was a it was a fun level to work on you know we we did the whole uh main hub like type you know of environment like it was, yeah. it was the central hub where you would go to the sand castle on the left we, that's pretty uh, cool juniors on the right as well as salty spittoon it, it was yeah it was pretty good yeah like <laughs> um well, the good. sand castle in particular was one of my more favorites um, because of the inclusion of some new mechanics in there. My personal favorite being just the sand generator, and especially the multicolored alphas. Actually, the multicolored alphas are a reference to Fair Lab Parent Shadow Showdown, where there was a very similar puzzle where you had to guide some different colored knights onto some different colored pedestals. That's where a lot of that inspiration came from. Oh, no. Oh, I didn't even know that. Well, hey, there you go. The more you know, right? Not Fairly Odd Parents. Um... There is a Sorry, little, little it... bit of horror in the level uh, in Weenie Hut Juniors, obviously. Um, oh, yeah. Most of the level is more focused on just relaxation and character dialogue and Puzzles. development and that sort of thing. Um, that was also a turning point where, at least for me, I realized that uh, the game isn't always going to be scary, and that's okay. Despite what people may think. That, yeah, man. Ooh, if there's any, like, moment of calm, then it's not really scary anymore. Well, the game wasn't intended to be pure horror, because if it were horror 24-7, or it just, like, had you in suspense for the longest time, exactly. eventually that will die down. It'll get old. And it's still SpongeBob, after all, so we have to have yeah. moments where it's, you know, you gotta calm. You gotta scare them when they least expect it. oriented comedic that, that nightmare sort of fuel like for example the pa the fact that patrick's a literal ticking time bomb um <laughs> from the very moment he inhales gasoline uh which is you know very dangerous at other levels um if you uh you know visit them after this one or you've played them already you understand why mm -hmm. okay so uh weenie hut juniors is the scariest ambience in the game don't at me. It's so fucking terrifying. I uh, love the diversity in this level. It's like three levels in one. It's so long. This is probably, this level probably takes the longest to beat. Um, maybe Tentacle Acres takes longer, but this is probably the longest one. And it's a no death level, which is rough. <laughs> All the no de de death levels are pretty long. Um, uh, I really like that they added Dennis. I originally was gonna voice Dennis. You notice Dennis doesn't talk. He just has text. I was going to voice him, but I couldn't fucking do his voice. I, I couldn't do it. I used to be able to do voices so much better, but now I, I just can't anymore. I can't voice act anymore. I'm so bad. I mean, I can a little bit, but it just sounds like me. Okay, Sandy's Tree Dome. I think this is the last one. Yeah, this is the last one. You guys ready? Sandy's Tree Dome, the worst level in the game. I was not at all satisfied with it. It was a, it was a mess. <laughs> oh, cause, okay, well, I, mean, I want to start from the beginning, really. Um, oh, no. Firstly, it was a maze of snow walls where your enemies were Wormy, Nut Alarm, and these Nut Bots. The Nut Bots would stun you, Wormy would get in your face, and oh, sometimes Wormy trigger isn't. Sandy, and the Nut Alarm would automatically trigger if, you know, he spotted you. You were originally going to be using torches to melt the ice off the door, and eventually... When we play tested it and other playtests who played through this didn't like it at all, and I 100% agree it was abysmal. So we moved on to reworking the level. We made yep, the tree dome, um, you know, not a maze. We made the uh, tree actually explorable inside. Yeah. Uh, and changed the whole torch gimmick oh, to a flamethrower that you would have to build with different parts. While it is still a bit tedious, it was more enjoyable to play through, especially it's very uh, the dynamic of going outside and inside, you know, the whole speed 
uh, sort of difference there. Mm -hmm. Now, there is one more aspect to this uh, whole ordeal. Um, fun fact, this was not a no-death uh, level at first. This was a time trial. And guess which part of this level was the time trial? The part where you ran around and collect all the parts of the flamethrower. Mm -hmm. And you want to know the time that we estimated it to be? Three minutes. Ten minutes and 45 seconds. Ten That's minutes? Right. A ten minute, 45 second time trial that we thought was a brilliant idea at first. Why uh, and I then three, looked at it idiot. compared to other levels and was like, this is, no. That's stop. insane. <laughs> that level Could was not all suited for a time trial anyway. Barely the way it was missing designed. it. Uh, we we definitely salvaged as much as we could from this level. Yeah. Uh, I know a lot of people were craving a hibernation scenario. It turned out and really while good. We did deliver. I think this is personally my least favorite level. Really. Right in front of uh, Mermelair. Mermelair. For two entirely separate reasons. Mermelair was just more of a lot of technical problems. The longer from levels, man. My standpoint. And Sandy Tree, Sandy's Tree Dome was uh, more of like technical problems in terms of execution. From I feel like mm, yeah. standpoint to an extent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So long story short, we both screwed up. Uh, it's good levels. though. Uh, those levels are probably not going to be great uh, in their own right. But, They're uh, good. You know, we learn from our mistakes. Uh, we learn not to be stupid, uh, and we learn <sighs> not to always rely on three in the morning thoughts. And we learn not to, uh, you know record without your mic recording you know ah, stop <laughs> that's fucking amazing oh my god uh so cool but anyway yeah that's that's it dude uh i like sandy's tree dome i like mermelair i like all the levels i think it's great um i'm really happy with how sandy's tree dome turned out it's got that boofy's bunker bunker mode like we had to find a key, unlock the door, find a key, unlock the door. It's kind of like that. Uh, it's almost exactly like that, actually. I love the don't run past this point mechanic. I love all the enemies that spawn. It's, it gets really intense really fast. Like the further you get into the level, the more intense it gets. I think they nerfed this level, by the way, in the full version. So the, the level you saw me play that I aced, it, it's not that hard anymore. <laughs> they, 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 they changed it. So it's been a lot more balanced. They put a lot more work in, like they said, they completely redid Sandy's Tree Dome. It's so different from the alpha versions. But yeah, that's, that's some developer commentaries. I did them all. They're done. Hope you enjoyed this hour-long video. Uh, I was going to edit this whole series tonight, but, <laughs> but I don't have time now. Um, I'll, I'll edit tomorrow. I am, I'm fucking exhausted. I got to get some sleep. Um, maybe. I don't know. I might edit. <laughs> I'm on, it's the week, it's Friday, so, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed Around the Clock at Bikini Bottom. Again, if you want me to do anything else in the game, let me know. I've done 101% of this game. Uh, but if you guys want me to check out the, um, there's a, there's a prologue. If you guys want me to do a reading of the prologue, let me know. If you guys want me to go through the, uh, the handbook thing, the manual that came with the game, let me know. I can do that. I don't know. Up to you guys. I definitely plan on speed running it though. I just got to practice. So hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did enjoy, make sure you slap that like button underneath the video. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.